Hey everybody, Raziel here, coming back at you with another Smite God build for the Xbox One, or any uh, platform really. Um, this week we're coming at you with Guan Yu, uh, the Saint of War. He is the warrior you get for free out of the box uh, that uh, when you when you download the game. Uh, he's one of the five gods you get for free no matter what. Um, and he is a little bit of a beast at times if you build him right and play and play him correctly. Um, before we get started, a little fun fact here about Guan Yu is that he himself is not actually a god in the sense of the other pantheons. Um, he was actually a real person, um, and you may recognize the name, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, like Romance of the Three Kingdom type games with Lu Bei and Cao Cao and everything. And he was a real person that actually lived in China um, way back when. And people uh, really adored his, his beliefs and everything. And, and years and years after his death, they kind of deified him. And became, he, so he became a god in that sense. But he wasn't like a true god uh, from the start as a, like Zeus or, or Odin or something like that. Uh, that being said, um, this video we're going to go over... Um, his abilities, or as I'm going to call it, his kit, uh, his relics, his item builds, uh, and then we'll go over his combos and fighting scenarios. Um, it, and for the item build, we're going to go, um, you can kind of play two roles. You can play the solo role and the support role in conquest matches and really uh, any magics for the most part. So, um, so hopefully we keep it between 30 and 45 minutes. Um, if you have any comments and any gods you want to see after this, please leave them down below. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing this every week that I can. So, and all the support is greatly appreciated. <clears throat> Excuse me, coming off of allergies or a cold or something, so I may be clearing my throat periodically, and I apologize if that's annoying as hell. Uh, so before we get started, I'm going to go over my housekeeping here. Uh, it has to deal with the... Uh, here's a kit down there. As you can see now, there are four numbers. I use the Savage layout on Xbox One. It's going to differ from any other layout on the Xbox One. It's going to differ from any other button layout on the PS4. And if you're using a PC or Mac, it, you have a whole different UI to begin with. So, just to make it simple, I'm going to call them out as 1, 2, 3, and 4 instead of the actual buttons or keys that it would be. One being all the way to the left and his ultimate, uh, 4 on the right. I believe the order of these, this, this kit, these abilities does not change no matter what platform it's just the location of the buttons associated with them will change okay we've got that out of the way let's get this started we're going to go over his passive which is called painless guan yu gains force of will as he deals or takes damage each damage he damage each time he damages or receives damage from an enemy god it charges up his conviction uh, which is um right here I believe it's that little like plate thing with the mask there that will fill up with blood essentially uh, as as his conviction increases. Uh, once it's charged up to upon 20 hits given or taken, uh, his heal, which is going to be his one, uh, will um, not conviction. His painless. Um, his conviction will heal for two times. I was calling it conviction. It's just painless down there. Oh, over there. So, we're going to go over here into Conviction, which is his one. It has a radius of 30 units, whatever the hell that is. Feet or meters or meters or whatever. Guan Yu uh, is a courageous, uh, his courageous leadership uh, is infectious and, when focused, heals himself and his allies. Uh, healing enemy, oh, not healing, healing friendly gods reduces his cooldowns by 2%. Now, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it scales up. It doesn't scale based upon his physical power. It's going to be a flat heal no matter what. Or, you know, a flat heal plus whatever his painless passive uh, increases it by. So his conviction and his painless are directly, or his passive, are directly tied together. Uh, and if you heal an enemy, a uh, friendly god, I'm saying enemy, you don't heal the enemy. If you heal a friendly god, then it will reduce cooldowns by two seconds. All right, that, that works pretty cool. All right. So we're going to go to his two. It's called Warrior's Will. It's a dash. He charges forward with his crescent blade extended in front of him. 
All enemies in his path take damage and are slowed. Hitting enemy gods lowers all of Guan Yu's cooldowns by two seconds, similar to his conviction. Guan Yu is immune, immune, that's a new word, immune to roots and cripples and knockups while he's dashing. So it's kind of a, a CC, somewhat CC immunity, uh, and it lowers cooldowns by two seconds. Now I think it, I think it might be just two seconds or potentially two seconds per gun. Don't quote me on that. Either way, it's two seconds. That's not too bad. Cooldown reductions. You know, you hit an enemy guard, it's down 10 seconds, and then you have like a 40% cooldown. It's a six second cooldown. Not too bad. We're going to his three, which is his main damage wave clear ability here. It's the it's the Taolu Assault. It's in a line, somewhat of a line. Uh, you can move while doing it. So it's it's a line in front of him. And if you want to move, you can uh, in turn, I think, and everything. Uh, he spins his blade in a controlled but furious display. S uh, slicing enemies for damage every 0.3 seconds for 3 seconds, or I think that's what, 10 hits? I don't know. Simple math. You you try it out at home. Uh, each hit steals enemy protections, giving them to Guan Yu. He's immune to knockbacks for the duration. And it's, you know, you can only steal a maximum of ten, uh, three, uh, 3 stacks. So, at max rank, you can steal 30 protections from the enemy and give them to yourself. That's pretty good. Plus, you know, it does a lot of damage. Oh, there is scaling on this. There's scaling on his 2 uh, of 80%. Of um, oh, no, that's, that's my Scylla notes. There was scaling on his 2 of 50% and scaling uh, on his 3 here for 20% of his physical power. So 50 and 20. <clears throat> Not too bad, but the first two abilities do give him cooldown reduction. It's by using them on uh, on, the, on an, uh, an ally or an enemy. So that's not too bad. You use two of those, you can essentially take four seconds off your ultimate. You do that a couple times, your ultimate will be, will be up pretty quick, uh, depending how well you, you hit those abilities. Uh, so then we're going to go into his ultimate here, which is Cavalry Charge. It's an area sort of thing. Uh, if you played against him before, um, you know. You know. He mounts his horse and he charges for four seconds. While mounted, you can steer and attack. Or you can just run if you want. But I, I'm usually slicing like freaking crazy, hitting that button furiously and steering while I can. He's immune to crowd control and they take damage and are slowed when they're hit on, well, when you're on your horse. Uh, it, <laughs> each hit increases damage and, uh, and, when he dismounts, it stuns the enemies within its radius. And you can cancel at any time. It doesn't have to go the whole four seconds. But why the hell would you get off the horse early when you're on a freaking horse? Uh, you can escalate 20% per hit against enemy uh, gods. So I uh, hit him five times. Unless, unless I'm reading this wrong, you can do an extra 100% damage. That's, that's not bad. I mean, it's not a lot of damage to begin with. It's 175 plus 30% of your physical power. But if you, you kind of essentially double that per hit, if you get them more than five hits or whatever. So, I mean, it's kind of hard in four seconds, but you know what I'm trying to say here. It's it's pretty good. It's 90 second cooldown, but with his other abilities, he can he can chip away at that, plus the cooldown reduction you get from items. And this I, this uh, this um, this uh, ultimate can come up pretty quick. Like I said, allergies and something, I'm a little groggy. I apologize. I'm actually going to take a sip right now before we move on to the next part. I think I might have forgotten to mention it, but the purpose of this video is to help new players just learning Smite. Just installed Smite, you can use this god. Uh, haven't really used this god. Um, or you haven't used this god in a while, and things have changed in terms of items, and you forgot, you know, what the hell he does. His kit's been reworked a little bit, etc., etc. So uh, uh, this should hopefully help all, any and all of you. I come here and try to listen to me uh, ramble on about this god. Anyway, so next we're going into relics. This is relics. Now, primarily, he's going to be in the solo lane uh, and ranked in conquest matches, period. Um, so, teleport is going to be his, his first. 
uh, relic he's going to buy. Just so he can get back to lane uh, the quickest. Because again, to that tower, it's all lane. That's the furthest away from the fountain. So it's going to take the longest time. Plus, if you do it strategically, you, you can get back before any damage is done against your tower. Uh, so you're going to buy this up first. Right? Uh, the second item, or second relic, is up to you. You could get uh, meditation for that extra heal in addition to your your one. You could go with a sprint, which usually uh, you wouldn't as a solo. A weakening curse because you'll be frontlining. The weakening curse is a possibility as well, or sanctuary depending on what the team comp is. Like they got a new wa, a neath, or something like that. Thanatos. Uh, but we're gonna go med. And I say that because. Uh, meditation, if you, the other role he could be played in Conquest is support in the dual lane. He'll probably go meditation first. Or, depending on the team cup, you're going to go sanctuary. And then med. Uh, you're always probably going to go, uh, teleport in soul lane, no matter what. Even if they, even if they're heavy on the CC, you'll have to go with teleport just to save your tower. So, that kind of covers the relics. Same as usual, you know. Uh, solo lane, you want teleport, meditation, and or, you know, sanctuary or purification. Uh, if you're support, go purification if you need it. But more more often than not, you're going to lean towards meditation. Because your, your hunter could use the extra mana as well. And the extra heal helps both of you out. So, that's what we're going with for this video here. Again, because he's solo lane, primarily, that's the main build we're going to start with. And then I'll tweak it accordingly. Or support okay so to start out uh, his starter item which for some reason they put death toll more often than not you're gonna go blue stone pen just for that extra little power little mana and eh, that you get um, right off the bat plus you know the extra damage it does from the blue stone so you're gonna start off with blue stone uh, well, I'm going to go with solo build first, and then I'll go over support. I'm going to go bluestone first, and then I'm going to go boots. We're going to want the uh, warrior tabby for the additional power. Just straight up. Additional power. You're going to be, you know, boxing, uh, zoning out each other in the solo lane. You want the additional power. Plus, I mean, the movement speed is the same across the board, I think, except for the, uh, the boots all the way to the right. So... You know, this will give you that looks extra boost. And by this point, you know, you guys are starting to hit pretty good. Um, it's not on the recommended for some reason. The next item you're going to want is Breastplate of Valor. Because most likely, most likely, the other solo laner is going to be a warrior as well. Probably, you know, for the most part, warriors are, you know, pigeonholed, say, into the solo lane. If you're solo lane, you're going to go with a warrior more times than not. There have been mages that go. Last season, there was a lot of um, hunters that went in. It's still possible. For the most part, you're going to want a warrior because you want that second frontliner flash damage dealer uh, mid to late game. So, the other guy's physical power, for the most part. More times than not, he's going to be physical power. So, you're going to want to go Breastplate of Valor. Protection you get you know, physical always. protection, some mana, and some cooldown reduction. Now, if the other god is, say... Uh, magical god, you know, it's a Kumbakarna for some reason, or or even a Chang'e, you're going to want to go uh, Genji's Guard uh, for a, a big chunk of magical protection. Gives you a little bit of cooldown reduction, and it gives you the MP5. Or you could go Bulwark uh, to start out too. Uh, it gives you crowd control reduction, etc. And it gives you a little extra shield. Those are your two options. Instead of the Breastplate to start out with, if the, so, if the other solo laner is not physical. But more times than not, it's going to be another physical god. So your next item after Breastplate of Valor is going to be Jotun's Wrath. Because it gives you that physical power. It gives you mana. It gives you a little bit of a penetration. But it also gives you the tool of some more cooldown. Oh, I hit the wrong button there. Uh, at this point, we, we are now capped at... Max cooldown of 40. So, oops, that's not the button I want. I want to get rid of that. There. So, you're not going to want any more cooldown after this. Okay? So, you're not going to want Genji's. 
if you're gonna if you're gonna build into a magical uh, defense at the after this point, which you should, because you're gonna be frontlining mid to late game in addition to the support if you're in the soul lane, then you, just be wary that you've capped and you don't want to overcap your, your cooldown reduction. So the next item will most likely be not in there either, huh? Bulwark, because you get the crowd control reduction which every god and their sister has some form of CC, it appears, especially this season. So this will help. Plus, it gives you a little extra shield once you hit, um, what is it, less than 30% of your health. That can save your ass sometimes. So, Good a little ball work next. To come by. Just make you a little, a little bit meatier. Uh, you're still doing some damage. Not enough. And that's why you're going to come over here. And you're going to pop in Titan's Bane. Right. For the additional power and the 33% physical penetration. That will do well. It's her joke here. Um, you can go with this. If you're very ahead, you can maybe even bypass the bulwark, go straight into Titans, and maybe pick up the um, frostbound there for the additional slow. Or if they, if you're going against the Chang'e, you want the you want the Brawler's beat stick there. That's right next to it here. Because it has um, healing reduction. Reduces healing by 40% there for 8 seconds. So that will help you out greatly. Uh, if you're going against uh, another he a healer in the solo lane, or they're just he they're, they're mid lanes, a healer, you know, or they're just heal heavy, you know. So, Brawlers, if, they're if you want to reduce their healing, and uh, Frostbound for, for the additional uh, slow that you get from that. Um, but more often than not, you're going to go Titan's Bane here. And then to finish out, you're going to, at some point, if you haven't already, you're going to sell off this blue stone and you're going to pick up, uh, you're, going, you're going crazy here. You're going to pick up this mantle of discord because it gives you 60 per, uh, protections on either side, physical and magical. Uh, oh shit, this overcaps you on cooldown. Ooh. I don't know why you would want this. You're capped out on cooldown, so... Um, you, you know what? At this point, cooldown doesn't really, you know... Protection is the passive is really good. Use. This is very late game. Or this is late game, no matter what. Mid, you know, you're, you're in the thick of it. You're team fighting. And that is why you're picking this up, even though you're overcapping. Because when you're below 30% health, you get that... Uh, stun for one second so you get that CC immunity for one second as well so it saves your ass stuns the people behind you gets you the hell out of dodge plus you've got 60 uh, protections let's see what are your protections here <clears throat> you've got 211 uh, physical and 168 that's not bad you're over half of the max protections you can get as a solo laner that's not too bad okay so as a solo laner this is going to be your build you're going to hit a decent amount um, but you're gonna be chunky, and this is this is good for him because he's not like Bologna or 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 I mean maybe an Amaterasu or someone like that, and where you go more damage than defense, I would think, depending on your build and your play style. Guan Yu late game is gonna be a frontliner, a secondary frontliner, and a healer. He is going to be in the mix of the team fights, just disrupting, healing, and and cleaning up with his ultimate and everything else. So that's why we're kind of heavy in the protections uh, in this build. Because that's what he does. He's going to be spamming them heals. He's going to be taking protections. He's going to be stunning, rooting, and skibbity bibbity bopping along the way. So that's that. Now his his support build would be similar to this, but you're gonna go you're gonna go boots again. The same boots. You would uh, you would start off that a blue stone. You start off with watcher's gifts, so you get that extra extra coin uh, for just being there. Right. Let's go back to that screen. Where was it? Um, you're gonna go boots again, warrior tabby. And then you're gonna go into sovereignty here, uh, or sovereignty if you 
I would think, because you get your allies gain 30, 30 protection, plus they gain uh, HP 5 as well. So you're healing. <laughs> and your support role, you're giving them extra protection. You're healing them uh, with a passive. You're healing them with your one. And you have a meditation as your first relic, most likely. So you're healing them there. So you guys are going to be a pretty good sustain and potentially in the dual lane uh, a good amount of time. Your next item would be Genji's uh, Genji's uh, guard here. Uh, just because you want that cooldown, you want the 20 MP5. Uh, and if you take magical damage from abilities, which you're probably going to do from the other support, because they're most likely going to be a, a, a support class, a guardian, which is magical based, um, you get more cooldown reductions. Okay, So this passive gives you two seconds off your cooldowns. It's one and it's two when you hit an, a friendly or an enemy gives two second cooldown reductions. So essentially, in a span of one second, one or two seconds, you can cut off six seconds off all your cooldowns. You alt, you, you knock off 60 seconds. Every 30 seconds, you can knock off essentially six seconds. I just said 60, didn't I? Six seconds, not 60 seconds. That'd be freaking OP as hell. So that's why you go Genji's Guard. Then you go Breastplate, then you go Bulwark, and then you go, you can go, um, where, where is it? You try out, um, Spirit robe here. It gives you, you know 40 on either side, plus you know cooldown and crowd control reduction. Uh, and let's see what is this? 15. You get damage mitigation too as the passive, which is all right. Um, but you know that would be your full build right there. Warrior Tabby, Sovereignty, Genji's Guard, uh, Breastplate of Valor, Bulwark of Hope, and then this uh, Spirit robe. I'm not going to change them out because I'm going to keep this for when I do the, the next bit here. Okay. So that is the builds. I went kind of quick because there's two. Uh, if there's any questions, leave a comment down below. I will answer them uh, as quickly as I can. That being said, we're going to move on to the next portion, which is combos, fighting scenarios, etc. Before we start that, we're going to go into order of ranking his abilities. All right. So you're going to want to rank his three first right off the bat uh, and then you could go either his one or his two depending on your play style his one will help with cooldown reductions against enemies uh, and not his one his two against enemies his one will help heal you and uh, your your um, self I guess uh, and your ally if you're in support role it also heals your minions so Early game, you want your minions to stay in lane a little bit longer to potentially do some damage against the enemy god. Because early game, if you play this game and you hit the enemy god, minions turn on you and just melt you. You got a full wave of minions looking right at you, just bye bye, your first kill. So, <laughs> that's up for debate. Is one or is two next? So, after that, Every opportunity you get, you rank up his three, Tyler Assault. You rank the hell out of that as quickly as you can. Then his alt whenever it pops up. Then you bounce between his one and his two. Or you can go straight straight heals and then two after that. It's totally up to you, to, up to your play style, how your team comp is doing, etc. But three, Tyler Assault, his wave clear, you always rank first, followed by his alt. After that, you can decide which alternate or rush, etc., etc. All right, so that being said, I've got him all max rank five. I'm walking around here. He's got his big ass Albert thingy, whatever the hell it's called. We're going to go over to our friend here, Odin. Hey, Odin. We're just doing, you know, one AQ. Oh, two. Oh, those. Yeah, so okay. So 319 is <coughs> his highest uh, damage. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. You know? uh, so, when you, when you, this is how we're gonna do it, right? Come at him, and he's got his wave, etc. You're gonna wanna tile the assault. All right? See, look, you hit him, you hit him, you hit him. You probably took some damage. You heal, and then you dash through. And you look at your cooldowns are pretty good. You clean up, 
etc. All right, so I kind of went through that quick. That's pretty much going to be your thing in the solo lane or in a team fight. You, you know, you look for the squishy. <coughs> you don't have kitten size or anything. You're not going to be doing a lot of damage, but you're going to want to disrupt. Battle of Assault will disrupt. Oh, you shit, you're taking damage. Okay. Okay, heal, dash, boom. Look at that. Talo Assault's gonna be up pretty soon. And you're still, you're kinda just doing damage. You got Frostbound on here in this kit somewhere, um, in this item build somewhere. Then, uh, then you're slowing him down. He can't run away. He can't run away. Um, so, that's not bad. You, know? you, you could honestly, with this, with this, with this full build kit, you could go instead of Jotun's, you could go with Frostbound. And that way you wouldn't be overcapped. Wouldn't have as much penetration, but you get 33% pen with uh, Titan's Bane. So uh, I think out of all these items to replace, Frostbound would be it. Plus, having a fourth item wouldn't be as bad either. So, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to take Jotun's out. I'm going to put Frostbound in. We're going to see how much, how much of a change that is. All right, so as you can see, I do less damage, but I'm utility because they're slow as all hell. Now, if you also look down here, it's a weird way to point. My passive is now full. I've got like bandages and shit on my mask. There's blood dripping everywhere. That is a full passive. So my conviction, my one, will do twice as much healing. So all right, let's just go through this again, and then I'll show you results. Um, and uh, I think that'll be it. This is a fairly quick one. Hopefully I didn't rush too much. All right, so Talu Assault, right? Oh, I took some damage. All right, let's heal and then go through. If it's friendly God, I'd be pretty much at Talu Assault again. Oh, they're trying to run away. I am going to steer and attack and boom. And inside the radius, he is stunned. And then I Talu Assault again. Holy shit, he's taking so much damage. Heal, dash through, boom. And there goes the dynamite. All right, so that was kind of quick. Hopefully that wasn't too quick. But you understand what the hell I just did. I did a lot of shit. And I did it. it that would have slowed, crippled, confused, stunned, etc., etc. Um, and that is why he's OP a little bit. His heal is just ridiculous. Conviction is one in a team fight. You you hit all those abilities, and you get the passives and everything else, uh, where you get those extra two seconds shaved off, and his heal is up like that. He's just spamming heals, spamming heals. Boom, boom, boom. I've out healed like an Aphrodite as a support Guan in a ranked match, even. You know? So. He is, he is a little bit of a beast from the east, and he's a starter god. You, know, you can't go wrong with a starter god this good. Actually, to be honest, all starter gods are pretty freaking awesome. You master them, and you, you can get, get pretty far uh, in this game. Anyway, let's wrap this up before it gets too long. I hope that helped new players. I hope that helped refresh old players who haven't played Guan Yu. But I've noticed that he's pretty good still in the meta, and you're getting bodied by someone playing a Guan Yu. A Guan Yu supports being played against you, and you don't know why, etc., etc. Again, hit that thumbs up, leave a comment that, you know, this helped, or what I could do to improve future uh, guides. Uh, subscribe to the channel, I'm gonna have many more guides. I don't know, this is what, nine? And there's 77 gods, okay? So I'm going to be busy for a while. It's over a year's worth of guides if I stick to just this one a week. Uh, so F and A right, you know? I'm going to be pumping them out. Uh, you can also catch me live on Twitch uh, at, at Razilum underscore Inc. And on Twitter at Razilum underscore Inc. As you can see over here, uh, through that rotating little uh, thing of Actually, that's just my YouTube, but that's because uh, this is my streaming uh, layout. I should probably change that at some point. Maybe I will, and maybe I'm just too damn lazy to do it. Either way, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate anyone who's watched the videos, who keeps coming back. Please subscribe. All the support is greatly appreciated. I will see you guys in the next one. And um, uh, peace. Yeah, a little bit of peace. Bye.
Bye, guys.